Wi-Fi 7 delivers 2.2 times faster real-world speeds with peak improvements up to three times, given your internet speed is higher than 200 megabits per second. In addition, the new Eero Max 7 maintained 80% of its speed through the walls, something that Wi-Fi 6 couldn't achieve. That's the video. You can find the link to get one below. But if you want to understand these numbers and see if it's worth upgrading, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Sander and I believe in technology. Today, we're diving into Wi-Fi 7 technology, testing out the new Eero Max 7 against the Eero Pro 6. We'll look at the performance across four different locations, test with both Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6 devices, and analyze over 300 speed measurements to give you the complete picture of what this upgrade actually means for your network. Wi-Fi 7 arrived with promises of theoretical speeds 4.8 times higher, up to 46 gigabits per second compared to Wi-Fi 6's 9.6 gigabits per second. But we all know that those theoretical speeds rarely match the real-world performance. The average US household internet speed is now 220 megabits per second, up from 72 megabits per second when Wi-Fi 6 launched in 2020. What's changed since Wi-Fi 6? The number of connected devices in an average home has jumped from 11 to over 20, and that's expected to reach 30 plus in three years. We're also seeing more demanding applications like 4K streaming, cloud gaming, smart home devices adding constant background traffic. So the question isn't necessarily about the peak speeds, but rather how Wi-Fi 7 handles this increased demand while maintaining performance through walls across multiple devices. Wi-Fi 7 brings three major innovations that work together to deliver better performance. First, the channel width has doubled to 320 MHz, compared to Wi-Fi 6's 160 MHz. Think of it like doubling the number of lanes on a highway. More data can flow simultaneously. This wider channel alone contributes to about 40% of Wi-Fi 7 speed improvements. Second, it introduces multi-link operation or MLO. Your devices can now use multiple frequency bands at once. Let me break this down. Wi-Fi 6 devices could only use one band at the time, either 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz or 6 GHz. With MLO, your phone can receive data through both 5 GHz and 6 GHz simultaneously. It's like having two internet connections working as one. If one band experiences inference, MLO automatically shifts more data to the cleaner band. This accounts for roughly 35% of the performance improvement. And third, Wi-Fi 7 uses 4K QAM encoding, up from Wi-Fi 6's 1K QAM encoding. This packs 20% more data into each transmission. In real terms, Wi-Fi 6 sends 10 bits per every transmission, and Wi-Fi 7 sends 12 bits per every transmission. This it gives a 20% efficiency gain and compounds the other improvements. Combined, these three technologies contribute to Wi-Fi 7's theoretical 4.8 times speed increase over Wi-Fi 6. But as we'll see in our testing, real-world improvements can actually even exceed this in some scenarios. I tested both single and dual router setups in four locations. Next to the router for baseline performance, then at my desk, which is one wall away, typical home office setup, then in the living room, which is two walls away, using a mesh router, which is a common streaming scenario, and then outside, kind of the worst case scenario, using a mesh router, testing the range limit. I used three devices to represent different technology generations, the iPhone 16 Pro Max with Wi-Fi 7 support, with Pixel 9 and Wi-Fi 7 support, and a MacBook with Wi-Fi 6 support. Then I did five speed tests per device per location at different times of the day. Let's look at two types of speed tests. First, we'll check the actual download speeds you'd get with your internet service. And then we'll look at transmission rates, which actually shows the true router to device speed without being limited by your internet connection. Download speeds next to the router, Euro Pro 6 achieved 204 megabits per second on average. Euro Max 7 more than doubled it, getting 454 megabits per second on average. My theoretical maximum with an ethernet cable to the router is around 660 megabits per second. So I'm able to maintain around 70% of the speed via Wi-Fi 7, which is delivering more than double the speed of Wi-Fi 6. If you're paying for a gigabit internet, this difference could be even more dramatic. Living room performance two walls away using the mesh networking, Euro Pro 6 delivered 121 megabits per second on average, while Euro Max 7 delivered 365 megabits per second on average. This is where it gets interesting. Wi-Fi 6 lost almost half of its speed through the walls, while Wi-Fi 7 only dropped by 20% through mesh networking. This is another level for Wi-Fi 7. In real terms, this means that your 4K streaming and video calls will work just as well in the living room as they would do next to the router. Now, let's take a look at transmission rate, which is the direct speed between your router and your device, which shows the true capability of Wi-Fi 7 without internet speed limitations. 
Next to the router, Wi-Fi 6 hit 1200 megabits per second, while Wi-Fi 7 doubled it at 2400 megabits per second. Through two walls, Wi-Fi 6 dropped to 648 megabits per second through mesh networking, while Wi-Fi 7 maintained an impressive 2400 megabits per second even through mesh networking. Outside, Wi-Fi 6 fell to 306 megabits per second, while Wi-Fi 7 still delivered double the transmission rate of Wi-Fi 6 at 1,152 megabits per second. These transmission rates show the router's raw capability. Imagine it as the size of your home's internet pipes. You know, even though your internet plan might not be this fast, but having larger pipes means better performance when multiple devices are using the network at the same time. Device-specific performance also revealed fascinating patterns iPhone 16 Pro supporting Wi-Fi 7 got 122% faster speeds overall. Pixel 9 supporting Wi-Fi 7 achieved 119% faster speeds than Wi-Fi 6. And the MacBook Pro, which actually only supports Wi-Fi 6E, still got 67% improvement. The last point is really crucial. Wi-Fi 7 routers significantly improved performance even for the Wi-Fi 6 devices. This improvement comes from better signal processing, more efficient band steering, reduced network congestion, and also enhanced beamforming capabilities. The Eero Max 7 brings significant hardware upgrades that enable these improvements. It's got a 2.8 GHz quad-core processor, twice as fast as on the Eero Pro 6, it doubles the RAM from 1 gig to 2 gigs. It offers 10 times faster 10 gigabit Ethernet ports versus a standard 1 gigabit into Ethernet port on Wi Fi 6 devices, and provides 25% more coverage per unit from 2000 square feet to 2500 square feet. And it can also support more than 200 devices versus 75 devices before. Those key technical improvements also include more sophisticated antenna arrays and advanced signal processing enhanced MIMO capabilities, which we talked about, as well as improved thermal management. So, should you upgrade? Let's make it simple. Regarding internet speeds, if your internet plan is under 200 megabits per second, you can stick with your Wi-Fi 6 router. But if you're paying for 500 megabits per second at faster speeds, Wi-Fi 7 will actually help you get those speeds throughout your home and double from what you're getting from Wi-Fi 6. That's what happened to me. Regarding space for small apartments, Wi-Fi 6 is still great. But if you have a larger home where you need consistent speeds throughout walls, Wi-Fi 7's better coverage and better mesh networking makes it worth the upgrade. Regarding devices, if most of your devices are older than 2022, you can stay with Wi-Fi 6, but if you're using the latest phones and laptops, Wi-Fi 7 will give you noticeably better performance. In addition, when you have more than 20 devices constantly connected, Wi-Fi 7 ensures you still get the performance regardless of the total number of devices connected. At 599 or often on sale for 449, uh, the Eero Max 7 is significantly more expensive than the $249 Eero Pro 6, which is frequently on sale for 199. That's a $250 difference even at the sale price. However, the performance improvement might justify the cost for you. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know if you're looking to upgrade. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.